guys, it is May the 18th, 2024, and today I want to talk about the rebound effect of alcohol. And the reason I want to talk about this today is yesterday afternoon, I got kind of a last minute invite. Uh, a buddy of mine invited me to come up to the lake and camp with him last night. Uh, he's got a camper, um, and this is the first time I've gone anywhere by myself without a family member present in the past two years. Uh, it's a pretty big deal for me to be able to go somewhere alone. Um, and when he called me yesterday afternoon, um, and, you know, and we started talking about it, I was like, yeah, sure. And when I, when I was driving up there yesterday, I was thinking about this and how back when I used to drink, um, if somebody had called and, and offered something like this to me, uh, there's no way I could have, have driven and went last minute like that. Um, if I was going to go do something like that, I, I would have had to have left that morning. Um, it would have had to have been planned out. Uh, because I, if, if I had gotten an invite, it, like yesterday at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon to go to the lake, I would have already been intoxicated. I would, there would have already been, I would have had way too much to drink at that point to drive myself. Um, and I would have had to have someone drive. Um, so they would have had to come pick me up. It just would have been a whole, whole ordeal. And while I was driving out there yesterday, I, I was thinking about how when I was a drinker as well, how bad my anxiety used to be and how it impacted my freedom so much. I, I, I could not drive uh, most days. Um, and when I drove to work every single day, I took nothing but back roads to get there. I would drive literally around my elbow to get to my you know what to get to work uh, if i had taken the main road to get to work it would have taken me like i don't know maybe eight minutes to get there but the way that i had to drive every single day uh, because i had to take back roads because i was so anxious uh we're talking about like a 15 20 minute drive i mean it, it doubled the amount of time that it took me to get to work every single day because um of my anxiety and I had this idea, like, if I got up to, it, it, one of my things was I just would not get on main roads because I was afraid to get to stoplights and especially make left-hand turns. I don't know why, but when I would get up to the stoplight and get in that left-hand lane, you're kind of, like, stuck in the middle of traffic. And I had that this idea in my head, like, I was going to pass out. I always felt really lightheaded, and when my anxiety started ramping up, my heart would start beating, I, I would start breathing really shallow, uh, I would start seeing like sparkles and stuff like that. I mean, it just got really, really uncomfortable for me. And <clears throat> like I said, I would take back roads, dirt roads, all kinds of stuff to avoid getting on main roads. One, because, you know, I'll, I, I probably had a couple of drinks at that point too. But also, my anxiety was just so bad. And like I was saying, yesterday when I was driving up there, I was saying to myself, I could have never done this in the past. It just never would have happened. I would have been stuck at home. And if I'd gotten that offer, I would have had to say, no, thank you, I can't do it. I would have come up with some excuse. Um, but when I got the phone call, I was like, yeah, sure, I can come. You know, awesome. And uh, it was really liberating to be able to go and do that. Um, and, and not feel that anxiety. Now, do I still get anxiety? Of course. Uh, is it like it used to be? Absolutely not. And like I was saying at the beginning of the video, uh, the rebound effect. And I don't know if there's actually a term, there's an actual term for this. It's kind of something I'm just kind of coming up with. And what made me think about the rebound effect is, have you guys ever taken something like Afrin or something like that? It's the nasal spray that you use. I, I have to use it um, every year. I haven't actually, I haven't used it in the past two years, but I used to use it all the time. Um, whenever spring would come around, uh, my nose would get so stuffy. Uh, my allergies would get really bad when the pollen would start to drop and I could not breathe through, uh, through my nose. So I would purchase that, the Afrin, like, ex, like the extra strength Afrin, and spray a couple sprays up each one of my nostrils. And if you guys have ever used that stuff before, man, does it work. But it has something called the rebound effect. And this actually is true with, with those nasal sprays. And what ends up happening is, and it's one of the reasons that the stuff can get addictive, 
Uh, and it doesn't have anything to do with it. It doesn't make you feel any sort of way, but it can get addictive because you get into the rebound effect. You use the Afrin, it lasts for a few hours, but what ends up happening is that after it wears off, it rebounds and does the exact opposite that you want it to do. Your, your sinuses will actually start to close in on you and like swell and you can't breathe. So what do you have to do? You have to use more Afrin. And it, you get stuck in this like perpetual loop with the Afrin. It's just like using drugs or alcohol or whatever. Uh, because you want to be able to breathe, so what do you have to do? And it tells you don't use it for more than like 48 hours at a time because you'll end up, if you use it like the first time, it won't happen. Um, but if you've been using it for a couple days in a row, then you end up getting that rebound effect after that case. And then you're kind of stuck in it. And you have to keep spraying it up your nose in order to be able to breathe. And if you want to get to the point to where you're not relying on the Afrin uh, to work for you to be able to breathe through your nose, well, then you kind of got to go through a period. Um, I think, you know, it's probably lasts about 24 hours where you just absolutely can't breathe through your nose. You're, everything closes up and you've got to give your body a chance to kind of like realign itself and then your nasal passages will open back up naturally again, then you can start breathing. Well, the same thing applies to alcohol. And the reason I'm talking about this is that, you know, we have this idea that, you know, <clears throat> alcohol relieves stress. Um, it helps lower our anxiety. And guess what? It does. I'm not going to say that it doesn't. But with that idea that it's going to help us in that manner, it also has a rebound effect. And the rebound effect for me used to be horrible. Um, ever since I have stopped uh, using alcohol as a method to alleviate stress, um, lower my anxiety, um, my anxiety used to be horrible, but now it's, you know, it, it's few far in between when I get like really anxious anymore. And it's crazy to think about because back then it was like every single day I would get these these anxiety attacks. Uh, I would get really short breath. I mean, there were times that, you know, my heart would start fluttering. I thought that I was like about to pass out. And now I never get that bad anymore, ever. And I, I don't drink anymore. And it's, it's crazy looking back on that now. I'm, I was using alcohol as a method to relieve my anxiety, but it was just making it worse. You know, I would drink the night before to, you know, I had a really bad day at work, which I always had a bad day at work. There was always an excuse to drink. I mean, really. But, you know, and I did have a lot of bad days at work, but I would have a bad night at work, come home, drink a whole bunch of liquor. <clears throat> you know, the stress would kind of go away. You know, I get that euphoric feeling. And then I'd go to sleep, wake up the next morning. Just like that, the anxiety was full on, full blown. Um, I, I remember just like, you know, before I had to leave to go to work, I, I would be so afraid to get in my car and drive because my anxiety was so bad. And I don't feel like that anymore. But I had that rebound effect. You know, I got, yeah, I got my anxiety and stress relief the night before, but the next morning it was horrible. And the point to this is, is it's just like the Afrin. You know, we, we use it for a certain period of time to relieve our anxiety and stress, and yeah, it works, but then we end up with a rebound effect. So just like the Afrin, you can't breathe after you stop using it for a few days. And what do we do to alleviate that we can't breathe? Well, we use more Afrin. Well, we do the same thing with alcohol. So, you know, we go days and days and days using it as an anti-anxiolytical or whatever it's called, or, you know, anti-anxiety uh, and, you know, we're using it to relieve our stress. We use it for days on end. And then we wake up one day and we're like, okay, I'm not going to drink today. Well, what ends up happening? Um, the anxiety levels just ramp back up again. You know, they just keep going up. We have to give our, our bodies a chance to, you know, get the alcohol out of our system. And it might, it might not be a day. It might take a few days. But after a day or two or three or however it longs for you to kind of get back to baseline again, start to notice that that anxiety will start to alleviate a little bit. Am I saying the anxiety is going to go away altogether? Absolutely not. I'm not saying that at all. But the anxiety will decrease. 
alcohol creates anxiety, especially the next day when we're hungover. I mean, there is something called anxiety, and a lot of people talk about it because it's a true phenomenon. Um, you know, you're hungover, our anxiety levels are super high, and we just feel horrible. So we, we keep self-medicating ourselves with the alcohol in order to, or whatever our substance is, in order to relieve that anxiety or stress. And we're just, we're compounding on top of it and making the situation worse and worse and worse. And until we actually remove that substance out of our life and give ourselves a time to get back to homeostasis again, we're gonna we're gonna deal with that hangover. I mean that that hangover anxiety. But stick through it. If you're in the process right now of trying to quit drinking and you are just your anxiety levels all the way here, your stress levels up to here, you feel bad, it, your heart's racing, you're scared to go anywhere. You don't want to be out in public around people. I Trust me, I completely understand. I know where you're coming from. When I first stopped drinking, I couldn't go out in public. I remember one day we went to uh, one of those, like, um, it's like an indoor place for children to go to, and they've got, like, the jump around stuff, like a bunch of trampolines and the big ball cage where the kids can jump in. They had, like, zip lines going around. <clears throat> and we went, this was, like, I don't know, just a couple weeks after I had gotten out of the hospital, and... This is the first time I'd ever gone anywhere, and I don't even know how long, years, that I'd ever gone anywhere like this, and I hadn't had some drinks. It was a really big moment for me uh, to be out in public in a place like that, and I didn't have my uh, anti-anxiety drink, or 10. And going in there, I remember being so anxious, and ju just walking in the door, just being so anxious, and I just didn't really have a good time. Uh, you know, I, I, I was so uncomfortable in my own skin. Um, I just didn't really know how to function in public without being intoxicated, and I was scared. And I remember being in there and then getting done, and we left, and you know, we were, I was talking to my wife on the way home, and she was like, you know, what was wrong with you? And I said, you know, I just didn't feel comfortable. I just was nervous. And it's the first time I've been out in public like that since, you know, since I quit drinking, and, um, you know, I said, if, the, if it's going to be like this every time that we go out, I don't know if I want to do that anymore. And, you know, she's like, I understand, and let's give it some time. And then about two weeks later, uh, we actually went on a camping trip to the lake. And I remember going up there, and I just laid in. The, we, we, we were in one of those kind of like glamping camping sites. And um, it was like a really nice tent with an air conditioner and all this kind of stuff. And I basically just laid in the bed inside that, camp, in that, inside that tent the whole entire time. Um, instead of going out enjoying myself because I, I was so anxious, I didn't feel good. Uh, I was really uncomfortable just being around people. There were a bunch of people at the campground, and um, I didn't have a good time. And I, and you know, it was just a waste of, of an experience I could have had with my family. But instead, I just kind of laid in the bed and just kind of moped around, and um, you know, just didn't feel right. And I was thinking to myself, is this going to feel like this forever? I can promise you that it doesn't last forever. The feeling does go away. <clears throat> Will it go away completely? I don't know. I, you know, I'm not in your body. I don't know uh, your body chemistry, and I can't say for sure if it'll completely go away, because um, mine hasn't completely gone away, but 90% reduction in anxiety uh, since I've removed it. Has it taken a long time for it to do? It's taken some time, and I would say that gradually, you know, it start, my, my anxiety level started up here when I first stopped. And over time, it's kind of gone like this. At a, at a really steady curve, kind of going down. And at this point now, like I said, my anxiety level is not as bad as it used to be by any means. It's, it's a 90% reduction. So if you're at home, you're trying to stop, you're dealing with that really bad feeling, you know, the anxiety feeling, the just restless, you can't sleep at night. You don't feel comfortable going to the grocery store. Uh, you don't want to go to that family function or whatever it may be. Hey, I get it. But it does go away. And then that anxiety level will start to decrease. Give it some time. Don't give in. I know that it feels uncomfortable. I know that you're like just burning in your own skin. And all you want to do is just have that drink or use whatever the substance is to alleviate that stress and that anxiety. But I promise you that it does 
eventually start to reduce and you will get the feeling better and just like yesterday I can't tell you how good that felt to be able to just hop in my van and just leave and just drive there and I didn't have this like crippling anxiety when I went and that's freedom and we should be able to feel like that all the time and alcohol tricks us it plays a game with us you know in the beginning it really does work but as our time I keep talking about this as our tolerance starts to increase so does the amount of alcohol we have to consume to get to that same level and with with our tolerance increasing comes the consumption level that we have so our uh, hangover the next day is ten times worse and that when we're hung over our anxiety levels are just through the roof and um, I'm telling you with time it will eventually alleviate so just don't give in keep pushing forward and hang in there it, it, it does get better um, and another thing too uh, you know that 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 really helps out I think as well is just getting in some exercise going for a nice little walk you got to kind of expel some of that energy and just getting out if you can and if you can't I completely understand there was a time I couldn't walk either but if you can get out and just do a quick little 15 minute just kind of walk around just get your blood pumping get out in the sunshine for just a little bit um, man it, it, it really does help leave uh, that anxiety just a little bit and uh, you'll sleep better at night too but anyway guys I'm gonna go ahead and hop off of here for today I just wanted to talk about that I, I was thinking about that on the way out there yesterday and I was thinking about it on the way back today uh, you know I was driving home and it, it was fine before I would have went to the lake gotten completely wasted last night blacked out I would have woke up this morning I would have felt hard I would have been nursing my hangover um, it's right now it is like one o'clock I would probably still be nursing my hangover right now you know I would already have had a couple drinks um, and I probably would have gotten to the point where I'd gotten too intoxicated to drive home so I probably would have had to hang out another day or somebody would have had to come get me or something like that and it's just not a good way to live I mean alcohol really does put those handcuffs on us and it 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 locks us up it puts us in a prison cell and uh, you know once we get out of that prison cell and step away yeah it, it it takes a minute but it does eventually start to alleviate um guys thank you so much for watching today's video i am uh la the, my friend that i went camping with last night he he had a camper and we slept it rained last night on us as well so i slept really good we were in a pop-up camper and the rain was just hitting the canvas um but he is a musician uh that's not what he does for a living, but he does have a band, and he actually goes and plays. Uh, he and he, they get paid for playing in um, you know different places, venues, and stuff like that. Um, but he's a really, really good artist. And uh, last night uh, we were sitting by the campfire, and he got his guitar out, and uh, we were just sitting there hanging out, and he started playing some songs. And uh, he was playing. I asked him, you know, do you have any songs that you've written? And he said, yeah. And he played this one song for me. And um, I asked him, I said, do you have any songs about alcohol or anything like that? And, or drugs or anything like that? You know, like stepping away from them. And he goes, no, I don't. But I do have this one song that I wrote years ago uh, that maybe could relate to that. And um, I asked his permission if I could record that song last night um, while he was singing it. And he gave me permission. And I told him that I was going to uh, post it on my YouTube channel today. And he said that was completely fine. So... I'm going to add that uh, that song um, at the end here. I recorded him sitting by the fire last night, and uh, it was a really, really, really pretty song. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, with that said, guys, check out the, uh, the, the this little clip. I think it's about three minutes here at the end of him singing the song that he wrote. And um, I hope you guys enjoy it. And thank you so much for watching today, guys. And... Uh, don't forget tomorrow is going to be the talk with my wife. If you have any questions, please go back to last Sunday's video and add your questions to that uh, into the comments there. There already are some in there, um, but if y'all just add those those to uh, to to that day, that'd be great, and uh, we'd be happy to answer your questions tomorrow. So, with that said, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love y'all so much. Bye bye.
Walking down the street last night On this cold September night Sunshine on my face again The headphones on my ear they play That old familiar song I'm blown away Sunshine on my face again Yeah, yeah Through the raindrops in my eyes Through the raindrops in my eyes Headphones on my ear they play Headphones on my ear 